Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the second problem of today's weekly contest, maximum sum of distinct subarray with length k. The problem states that you are given an integer array nums and an integer k. You have to find the maximum subarray sum of all subarrays such that it its length is k and all the elements in that subarray are distinct. Okay. So basically if all any of these two conditions satisfy is not satisfied, you will not consider that subarray. And if none of the subarray matches any of these two conditions, you will just return zero. Okay. So hope uh, like let's take an example. Uh, let's say this is the this is the entire array and you have, we have to consider subarray all the subarray of length three and all the elements should be distinct. So all the subarray of length three are one five four four five like one five four five four two four two nine two nine nine and so on, right? So these are all the subarrays of length three. Now this is a valid subarray because all the elements are distinct. This is again a valid subarray. This is a valid subarray. This is not a valid subarray because all the elements here are not distinct. Similarly, this is also not a valid subarray. Now, first three are the valid subarray, and if you find the sum of first three, you will get uh, 10, 11, and 15, out of which 15 is maximum. So that was the answer. So hope your problem statement is clear. Now, notice that like what exactly you have to do. You have to just consider subarray of length k, right? So let's say k is three. So you will consider all the subarray of length three, and finding sum of subarray is very easy. You can do it in prefix sum. But there is a second condition. Second condition is all the elements should be distinct. Okay. So you have to uh, somehow find out how many distinct elements are there in the current subarray. Okay. So that you can find it using uh, like in various possible way. One of the simplest ways to just maintain uh, just maintain a pointer uh, distinct. So this distinct it will be initially zero. Okay. Now when whenever you encounter an element which you haven't encountered before, you will keep on incrementing this uh, counter. Okay. And whenever you are removing an element which will remove a particular element altogether, you will decrement this counter. Let's take an example. Let's say this is a subarray. Now we maintain a frequency array as well. Why frequency array? Because we want to know whether uh, whether a particular element is the first like first element or the first time we are seeing that element or is it something we have already considered. Okay. So initially we have these three elements one, five, four. So you will go ahead and mark this as the frequency of one as one, five as one, and four as one. Now notice that why before doing this, let's say uh, you you take first one. Now you will increment the frequency here. Now after you increment the frequency, you will check what is the frequency of one. Frequency of one is one, which means one occurs exactly one time, and this is the first time one is occurring because you just incremented the frequency, right? Now, because this is the first time it is occurring, I will increment the value of distinct. Uh, my distinct is also one now. Okay. Now we take five. Now, once we take five, five frequency will be incremented to one. Now, again, five frequency was zero, and now it is one. So basically, we again got a unique element in our uh, range set. So we will uh, modify this d to two. Now we go to four. Now again, we increment the value here because it went from zero to one. We again got a distinct element. So we will go, we will increment it to three. Now after doing it, uh, for the first subarray, you will just check what is the value of distinct distinct value is three. So because three is equals to K, you can consider this subarray because this subarray is good. This contain exactly three distinct elements and is of length three. So this subarray is good. You will uh, like you will just uh, consider this subarray in your answer set. So you will just maintain a result and initially result will be zero. 
once you got a valid subarray you will do uh, result equals to max of result comma that right so this uh, you will do once you get a valid subarray now let's say uh, you considered this subarray now you have to increment uh, you have to move this uh, range so initially your l was this and r was this now what happens your l becomes this and r becomes this so what exactly happens you removed one and you added back five uh, sorry you r is this so you removed one and you added back two right so you have to remove one first let's remove the one now if you remove the one frequency of one would become zero now because frequency of one is zero you have just lost a distinct element right so now again you added back two so frequency of two will become one now because you frequency of two went from zero to one so you got a distinct element so you will increment it to three now again check whether this is equals to three the answer is yes it is equals to three so because it is equals to three you will consider this subarray as well as a valid array a valid subarray and do this operation now after this you will again move uh, this so what happens you will remove five and add this five so basically you are not doing anything you are adding back five and removing back five so you are not doing anything so whatever uh, result was there will be there so this subarray is also a valid subarray now now it's like next is interesting so you moved again you removed four and you added this five so let's remove four first so you if you remove four this will become zero now because this goes from one to zero you will decrement your distinct right now you added back five so five was already one it will become two you will not touch distinct because it was already one and now it becomes two so there there is exactly one distinct five like would the five would be considered exactly once because it is one distinct element like both the five should not be considered in this distinct right so that's where this frequency array is now helpful like because you know that one five already existed in your result set you will not consider five again and just uh, like just give your take your uh, d as is it okay now once you have done this uh, you will see that okay this uh, number of distinct in this range is two which is not equals to three so this is not a valid subarray okay so hope you got the approach so this approach is uh, very very useful in some of the very hard problems as well because it actually tells you how you can do something iteratively like you can consider the number of distinct elements in a range is in itself a very hard problem but because you maintain like you have to do it in such a way that exactly adding one element and you will be exactly removing one element you can do it with the help of this frequency table and finding distinct element in a range is very simple now okay so this approach like you can keep this approach in your uh, toolbox and i am sure this will be helpful in many other problems i will try to find some other problems and will link them in the comment below uh, so let's look at the code finally so the code is very similar what we have done we have taken l and r and sum and this is our frequency here and this is our distinct value now from l to r i have just uh, uh, sum all of them up and incremented the frequency as well now if frequency was one it means we have encountered that for the first time so we incremented our distinct now once that is done what we have done we have uh, just uh, moved our l and r okay so we if distinct is k it means we have like current subarray has k distinct elements so we will just take result equals to result max of result comma sum if not we will not modify result now after considering this subarray we have to remove l and we have to insert r plus 1 right so what we have done we have removed l by removing l i mean uh, we removed its contribution from the sum we removed its frequency as as well now if frequency turns out to be zero it means 
we lost a distinct element and finally we will increment l now similarly insertion is also very similar we just added its contribution we incremented its frequency and now if its frequency was 1 it means this was the first time we have seen this index uh, seen this element so we will increment distinct as well okay so hope this problem statement is clear and this is as like i, I will try to mention again that this is a very uh, like this is very standard way of finding out something based on contribution okay so this will be helpful uh, so please uh, keep this in mind and try to utilize this approach as well while thinking about uh, a sub array problem or something where you can divide the problem in terms of contribution okay so hope you enjoy it if you like the video give it thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you